In today's video, we're going to discuss and compare two Python libraries that are used for the deployment and distribution of Python applications. Now, for those of you who don't know what deployment is, let me give you a brief overview. Deployment is basically the act of distributing your Python applications. It's a step that eventually all developers reach. You start with coding your application, testing it, and then eventually you need to distribute it to your client, to your client or customer base, okay? Now, the thing is that your customers, your clients, most likely do not have Python installed. And even if they do, they don't have the correct version. And even if they have that, then they might not have the required dependencies, the required libraries and packages that you installed. So this is an issue. Either you can go ahead and have them install it or install it for them, or what you can do is use PyInstaller or Nutica to generate a standalone executable, which basically takes all these dependencies and packs them into a single exe. So that's what this video is about. PyInstaller and Nutica both achieve this, but they do it in different ways and they have different pros and cons. So we're gonna discuss this. Let's start with PyInstaller. As we mentioned earlier, PyInstaller is a .py to .exe converter. It converts Python files to exes, but how does it work? Well, it works by bundling the Python interpreter. It takes your coding environment, basically, duplicates it and all of the libraries inside of it. It duplicates all of that and bundles it into the exe. So basically you're carrying around, or whoever you give it to, is carrying around a portable version of your Python coding environment. So obviously it's gonna work. It's gonna work no matter where it is because it's your Python coding environment where you know that the code works. So that's the logic behind PyInstaller. Let's take a look at Nutica. Nutica is a Python compiler. It compiles Python code to binary and then it compiles the binary, that binary code with a C compiler and generates C source code. Now this is a very radical approach and out of all the libraries that I know of, like there are at least five or six major ones to generate EXEs in Python, Nutica stands out from all of them. All of the others have the same approach. They bundle the Python interpreter into the EXE, but Nutica is different. It has a different approach. It basically generates an EXE the same way that C or C++ do, or at least in a very similar way, because it generates C code and then, you know, compiles that. So that's actually very interesting. And one thing over here is that it improves performance, okay? Improves performance of your application. And we'll discuss this a bit more, but that's basically the gist of Nutica, okay? It compiles your Python code. It's not, you know, interpreter-based, it's compiler-based. Very interesting. Okay, so we're gonna compare PyInstaller and Nutica based off these six metrics, okay? These are the main six metrics that I think can decide which one you ought to be using. The first one is performance. Obviously performance is a very big deal and you want your application to be running, you know, smoothly, quickly and efficiently. So out of these two, you should already know this actually because PyInstaller executes Python code. Nutica is on the other hand, executing C code basically. So Nutica, actually wins here because it's just faster because you know python code is slower than c or c plus plus everyone knows that so there's no real debate here and i've actually done performance tests like this i've done a test between a pi installer generated application and a nutica generated application and the nutica one was clearly faster so there's no real debate here and obviously the performance gains will vary based on your application but people using Nutica have reported like up to, up to two or three times faster code, depending on the circumstances. Okay, so the next metric is size. Doing a direct comparison between them is a bit hard because they have different modes, different optimizations, and you know, comparing them directly becomes a bit hard. So let me just share with you some general observations and the overall conclusion. So PyInstaller scales better which means that as you add more libraries, PyInstaller, you know, scales better. It produces smaller EXEs in comparison to Nutica. I converted this like three, 4,000 line code, which had like 10 libraries like matplotlib, pandas, numpy, and a few more. And it generated a 120, 130 something MB EXE. 
whereas Nutica generated at 300 MB1. So you can see right there that uh, Pi installer scaled better. And one other observation I made, I tried another, you know, another test where we had the base Python installation, okay? No extra libraries. I did this in a virtual environment, so no extra libraries were involved. And both of them produced the same size, roughly, give or take one or two MB. And interestingly, Nutica can actually outperform PyInstaller in some cases. It has some good optimizations that it can actually bring it down to, you know, smaller exe sizes. I was able to generate a 7 MB file with Nutica using its uh, optimizations. There's a mode it has called standalone, which it generates a single exe instead of a whole folder. And I applied the Z standard optimization on it, which really compressed it down. That was really impressive. And I've never seen a 7 MB file like that before. Even with PyInstaller, when I perform optimizations, I don't think I've ever gotten a 7 MB file. So that's pretty good. And you might want to play around with that. Try out different things, different optimizations, and see just how much you can bring it down. Okay, but I would overall give this to PyInstaller because obviously your application is going to be pretty big in most cases. So yeah, PyInstaller would win. Cross-platform ability. This means that which operating systems they support. Now, PyInstaller and Nutica both have roughly the same. There's no issue. Actually, they have the exact same. I mean, they all support Linux, Ubuntu, uh, Windows, Mac, etc. Okay, there might be some minor differences here and there, but generally speaking, they are a draw on this. Okay, next up is load time. Load time is how long it takes the exe to load. Now, this is actually very important because a lot of people complain with PyInstaller that the load time is just too big, like five to 10 seconds, generally speaking. And that's a lot. That's more than what you would consider acceptable in some cases. And actually, I've seen cases where it goes beyond 10 seconds. And I've personally had EXEs that take like 12, 13 seconds. And that's not good. So that's an issue with PyInstaller. And that's actually why I began looking at other options. And that's how I found Nutica. Nutica, on the other hand, generates EXEs with like a two to five second load time, generally speaking. So that's like much better. And obviously this is gonna vary. The bigger your application is, the more libraries, the larger it'll become. If you try running a PyInstaller script, which only has one or two libraries or just the base Python installation, it'll load up in like three or four seconds, probably. But uh, obviously as you scale upwards, PyInstaller will get really heavy. Partially, it's, it's not even its fault. You know, well, it's a complicated story. Basically the Windows firewall, it uh, kind of screws with PyInstaller a bit and increases its load time by about five seconds. And then there's a few other factors to consider as well. But generally speaking, Nutica is better, no matter how you look at it. Okay, so winner is Nutica. Other than this, there's the compile time. Now this is a interesting topic because PyInstaller can generate an exe in an average of 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. Nutica is compile time is a bit weird. Nutica has a very compilation heavy process. What it does is generates the binary code, then it generates the C code from those, you know, binary format code. This is a lengthy process and Nutica actually kind of worried me in the start because it took two hours for me to convert my 3000, 4000 line code into an exe. That's quite a lot. PyInstaller took like 10, 15 minutes. But Nutica has some good optimizations. Like once you compile it for the first time, then it uses a cache system. So you only make a change, say at some point in your code, it's not gonna regenerate the whole thing. It's gonna regenerate pretty quickly. And the interesting thing is that the cache system can actually make it compile faster than PyInstaller sometimes. Because PyInstaller, like it takes 15 minutes, generally, generally speaking, 10 to 15 minutes. Or actually it takes five minutes for me in some cases for small applications. So like five to 15 minutes, PyInstaller takes that much time, no matter how many times you rerun it. Nutica can use the cache compilation 
and can generate itself sometimes in like half a minute or one minute. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, that's pretty cool actually because um, you can rerun your code. You want to make a small change here and there. You can make that change and then rerun and get your exe again in just under a minute. So that's pretty cool. But generally speaking, I would give it to PyInstaller because PyInstaller just has a better average and Nudica can take, again, it can take hours and I don't think that, uh, yeah, I, I would just give it to PyInstaller. Then there's community and this is our last metric. PyInstaller has a, a better community than Nudica and by better, I mean it's bigger. More people know about PyInstaller, more people use PyInstaller. Uh, from my observation anyway, there's more tutorials online for it. There's more resources, more videos. Nutica is a bit obscure-ish, kind of, even though it's been around for a while. But everyone who's used Nutica has always praised it, though. I will say that. I have very rarely seen complaints for Nutica except the compile time. That's something that people do complain about. But yeah. So that's uh, the community. And I would give it to PyInstaller, obviously. There's no real debate there. I do hope that Nudica's situation will improve in this in the future, and I am making videos on this. Uh, you might have already seen some of them by now. I am making videos on this to compare the two, the two of them and uh, to show you how to use Nudica as well, and then some other videos for how to optimize Nudica and stuff. So I, I am trying to kind of rectify that problem and get some more Nudica resources out there online. Okay, because there are very few videos on Nutica available online. But yeah, here's the overall chart that you can take a look at. So PyInstaller wins in three out of six categories and Nutica wins in two. Does that mean PyInstaller is better? Well, that's up to you. For example, do you value load time more where Nutica wins or do you value compile time more where PyInstaller wins? That's up to you. If you value the load time more, then you'll want to go with Nutica. If you value the compile time more, you would want to go with PyInstaller. But this can vary based on your situation, on your application, whether it's a big one, a small one, whether it's taking too long to load or whether it's, you know, not. So these are things to consider. You can at least make a preliminary decision now based on what I've told you in this video. Go ahead, try one of them out. If something about it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't feel satisfactory, you can try out the other one and then make your decision. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to be making more Nutica content in the future, so make sure to subscribe to the channel. I already have a lot of Py, Py installer content, so I'll leave links to those in the description below, so you can go check that out. All right, see you guys in the next video.